Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is. Time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And a number of my subscribers have aware of me of a video that Sean Nalawani did. They're like, Jason, you're going to want to check this video out. He's basically saying some of the exact same things you've been saying for years. So let me go ahead and put on my plus five out of speechcraft and let's talk about this. All right. Um, some people notice, like Jason, you actually pronounce his name correctly. You must actually somewhat respect the guy. Yeah, that's true, because guys I really don't respect, I, I mispronounce their names intentionally, because everyone does it to me, so I just kind of return the favor. But uh, Sean is one of those guys that, like I said, I've disagreed with him on certain points, and I think disagreeing with people is healthy. Um, I, I think it's reasonable, and we're all not going to see eye to eye on every topic. But this is one of those cases where Sean literally almost word for word verbatim agrees with everything that I've been saying for a long time on this. And I don't think it's because he's copying me. People will say things like, are you saying he copied it from you? No, I'm saying that anyone who has more than a decade of serious experience around the fitness world, coaching, training, things like that, and who's familiar with the medical literature already knows this stuff. And that's one of the difference between someone who's just trying to sell you guys a bunch of BS versus someone who legitimately understands and has knowledge and wisdom because literally everyone who has knowledge and wisdom in these areas is going to hold this exact same opinion and I don't think there's going to be a single exception. In fact, when you see someone who's an exception to what Sean is saying here, you know that they're a con man or you know that they have their own body image disorder. Okay, that's what we need to understand. So I'm going to link his video down below. Uh, and just a quick reminder for people, if you guys would like this video, click like down below. I would appreciate it. We'll offset the few guys who have the little dislike bot running. They've been running it for years. Um, it'll just kind of skew the difference a little bit. So over to the point. Um, Sean more or less broke down for people in this video that the actual myth that it's good or healthy or that it's part of fitness to be 6 or 7% body fat really needs to go away. Uh, that, that it is actually physically bad for you. And this is coming from a guy himself as he prizes aesthetics. When I say it, people don't want to listen because, well, like you don't really care about aesthetics, you don't want to get lean, or you, you suck your fat, everything else, right? Um, but they don't understand that I'm actually coming from a place of, of well-meaning from it. It has nothing to do with me personally. It actually is not even about me. It's not about me at all. It's about having common sense. And so then when you have someone like Sean who does pursue the aesthetics thing, it is his bag. It is his gig. He has been ultra lean and ripped a number of times. Now he's saying the same thing as a guy with a couple decades of experience in the game. All right. That matters because it's the exact same stuff. So it kind of reiterates what I've been saying because it supports it. Um, and it's this idea that, that honestly, the healthy body fat range for most men is going to be as low as 10% and up to about 20%. And even when I said that the other day, a bunch of people argued and said, you're just supporting being fat. You're supporting obesity. Uh, sorry, guys, there's always going to be background noise. There's nothing I can do about it. Part and parts of living in a big city, we just deal with it. But they're like, you're just supporting that. But actually, the medical literature supports it. Uh, usually you don't see any obesity or body fat related medical conditions appear on people's blood work or anything else so they get above 20% body fat. You don't see it at 19%. You don't see it at 18%. It doesn't appear because that's not outside the healthy range. It may not be peak athleticism because it's not, but as far as health and blood work and having a uh, low risk of heart disease and cancer and diabetes and all that, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine, and that's nothing to do with body acceptance. That's just looking at what the research says. So if you disagree with that, you're disagreeing with, with what the medical research shows. Um, you probably have your own body image disorder if you actually don't believe that, like you want to disagree with the medical evidence versus what you think. Well, maybe, maybe you need to reconsider what you consider to be evidence. Maybe you do have a body image disorder. So over to the point. Um, that's kind of your upper threshold, and your lower threshold is down around 10%. And as he pointed out, the same thing, there's a handful of people who are genetic outliers, same thing I've always said, who can get below that. But the odds that you are one of them is going to be very, very rare, right? Just like there are genetic outliers, guys who can bench press 500 pounds. All right, that's a rare genetic person. Someone who can bench press 500 pounds without ever using drugs, that's an even rarer person. They exist, but just because someone else has done it, if you assume that you're going to do it, that might be a little bit silly.
So it's the same thing with the ultra low body fats. There are people who genetically can get down to 8% body fat without suffering health problems. However, the vast majority of men don't fall in that category. And the first time they try it and they legitimately get to a real 8%, they find out that that's not reality. And, and as he pointed out, if you ask those guys who are smiling on Instagram and promoting it, uh, you know, they might be smiling in the picture, but if you ask them how do they really feel and they're honest, they're going to tell you, I feel terrible. My energy's down, my recovery's down, I have brain fog, clouded thoughts, I'm irritable, moody, uh, complete lack of sex drive, not even interested in it. Um, I'm hungry all the time, my body hurts. That's usually what they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you, I think about pizza 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, even when I'm laying at bed at night, I think about pizza instead of sex. Okay, that's what that's the life of 8% body fat. It's not sustainable. Um, and, and I can appreciate the fact that Sean is saying that. And he actually said that, look, a lot of you out there who are professionals who are promoting this as some sort of ideal fitness, you're not promoting fitness, you're promoting starvation, because that's what it is. And again, as Sean said, and I'm going to agree, guys who are natural, it shouldn't be a goal of yours, unless you are specifically going to go do physique competition or you have a photo shoot or some reason you need to go that low and you have very, very carefully planned it out and you accept that number one, it's temporary, number two, that your life is going to be miserable, and number three, you've, you've assessed the health risks of it, you shouldn't do it. And I mean, exactly like I did the other day, we had the Christian Guzman thing. What did Christian do? He ballooned back up. 30 pounds immediately. His girlfriend said that she couldn't stand being around him during that time period. So you guys need to understand, even if you don't realize how bad it is, everyone around you suffers when you diet down that lane. A lot of guys want to do it because they think, hey, I'll look great. I'll, I'll get girls. I'll attract this attention, that. They think they're going to get all these wonderful things. But the reality is, the truth, when you diet down that lane, you usually turn into such, uh, basically such a dickhead that no one can stand you. Because anyone, if you've ever been around people who are too dieting down that lane, how do they really act? Most of the time because they're dealing with brain fog, they're dealing with irritability, hunger, low testosterone, everything else, they're usually cranky. It's like they have PMS all the time. They're whiny, they cry, and they throw temper tantrums. That's actually what your personality is like. Even though you might not realize it, that's usually what happens by about 8% body fat for men. You, you turn into basically women who are, who are having PMS, and that's what you act like all the way until you get back to 10% body fat. You're just cranky and whiny and gripey, and, and you whine and cry all the time. Whether you realize it or not, because I've been around people who are in that phase, and that's exactly how they are. You also tend to be extremely insecure. You feel worse about your body. Usually when you're dieting down that lane, you're more insecure about your body than you are at 11 or 12% body fat, even if you're already self-conscious. So all it does is make you whine, cry, hurt your health, hurt your mood, affects your ability to work, your ability to train, your ability to hold on to muscle, right? It costs you gains, and then it ends up making you more insecure and more unhealthy than you were before. So as he points out, it's not a good idea. And the big problem we have is that it's become a marketing point of telling everybody to get shredded. And getting shredded isn't good. It isn't healthy, either psychologically, physically, or for your muscle mass. And the truth is, it's not even attractive to most people. But it's become such a major selling point that there are people who make their careers around it. And the truth is, is, is as he said, and I'm going to agree, these people need to reconsider the harm that they're doing because they're now promoting something that is very unhealthy as if it is healthy. It, it would literally be as bad as if all the, the fit pros started promoting smoking cigarettes and said, hey, smoking cigarettes is fit and healthy and it'll make you look cool and look good. Right? People would look at that and be like, you've lost your mind. That's what people would say, right? This is the exact same thing. It causes the, it's the exact same level of harm just through a different mechanism. It is just as harmful and anti-fitness as promoting smoking cigarettes. Yet people are doing it and promoting it as fitness. And the same argument can be used in, in place of it. Just like there's a small handful of people who don't suffer any health effects from dropping to 8% body fat, there are also a handful of people who smoke cigarettes their whole lives and never develop any health problems from it. But are they the norm or are they the exception? They're the exception to the rule. They're not the norm. So just because you meet one doesn't mean that it's healthy. And that's the problem we have. And the truth is most of these guys aren't really being honest about how bad they actually feel 
when they're doing it because they're putting on a public image and a marketing image so that they can make you know a six-figure income off of it or a seven-figure income off of it. But the truth is, they're dying. They're dying emotionally. They're dying physically. Uh, it is taking a toll on them to sustain it. And there's a reason a lot of these guys, very few of them stay that way year-round. They don't always do photos and shirtless stuff year-round. And the ones that do, you got to question what it's doing to them. Yeah, but you've got to remember at the end of the day, they're the exception to the rule. And I, I can appreciate that Sean is actually promoting the same idea and telling people, look, this, this, actually, this is a bad idea. You shouldn't even be marketing this. It's doing more harm than good. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.